you know, I, I, uh, I graduated from Harvard. I, I built DNA computers made, of, uh, computers made of RNA and DNA that operate within human cells. They were, the idea was we could use them to cure cancer. Uh, How did that go? Well, I, I, I'm like the youngest published author in Nature Biotech, I guess. Um, so we published a lot of research, but one of the things I realized in doing it was it takes a long time to get a product into someone's hands in biotechnology or, or the pharmaceutical industry. Mm. Really, really wanted to be able to build a product that we could you know, quickly get out there uh, that would have a big impact on people's lives. Why Rwanda? The country of Rwanda is unique in several ways. First of all, because it's small, it has a relatively small focused government and the team of people uh, who are in the different ministries are really investing heavily in healthcare and in education, particularly in using technology to improve uh, in, the, in those areas. And then the second one was that you, it's, it, you have a unique set of challenges in terms of blood and delivering other kinds of medical products. You know, Rwanda is known as the land of a thousand hills. So it's a, it can be a hard place to get around. So we, we realized that it was a place where we could move quickly and do something for the first time in the world, but it was also a place where the need was very high for something like Zipline. So the, the way that deliveries are being made today from hospi for, to hospitals of something like blood, if a patient is having a life-saving, is, is having a, basically a medical emergency and you need a life-saving product, that doctor, if they don't have the product on hand, will need to get into a car and drive two to three hours to the nearest blood bank and then wait in line at the blood bank to get the blood and then get it back. Obviously, that time period is dangerous for a patient. And so the advantage of Zipline is that it's much, much faster than making deliveries in any other ways. It's, it's more than an order of magnitude faster. Our average time for a delivery is 15 to 20 minutes, and it can be as short as like seven minutes. What are the current air regulations in Rwanda? A lot of people think, oh, you know, you're, you're in Rwanda because it must be much easier, there's no regulation. Interestingly, there's a civil aviation authority here that is just as focused on safety as the one in the US or in Europe, but there are a couple advantages. One is that the airspace is much simpler here, and the other is that because they have a small team, they can make decisions more quickly. So what we've done working with the Rwandan Civil Aviation Authority over the last year is actually implement the world's first modern regulatory practices with regard to drones. And so we've integrated this system into the airspace in a way that's safe for people flying in the airplanes, safe for people on the ground, and allows us to make life-saving deliveries to patients in hospitals. Um, what's different with the air traffic regs as they've been negotiated for zip line here that, you, that might not be the case in other countries? One of the reasons that uh, Rwanda is particularly favorable for being the first place in the world that this is happening is that we've been able to set up a partnership with the Rwandan Civil Aviation Authority that ensures we can integrate safely with the airspace. What that means is that the, our vehicles always fly below 500 feet, which is the commercial aviation floor, so there's no chance of one of these vehicles being in the same airspace as a, as a, a commercial plane. It also means that we're designing vehicles that are of a similar level of safety to a general aviation aircraft and we design things from scratch to be fully redundant in every way so that even if these vehicles if something goes wrong in flight the vehicle can take that into account and still return to home safely this is very important for safety of people on the ground uh, and then finally we've set up a way basically really clear communication protocols with the civil aviation authority where we are telling them every time we're making a flight they actually have a interface that shows them the position of all the vehicles in in the air at all times and they can issue uh, commands to us if they need us to move a plane or return a plane to home if you did this in another country is that possible it's absolutely possible to do what we're doing here in Rwanda and other countries. In fact, you know, we're already working with other governments, uh, not just in East Africa, but in other parts of the world, to do similar things. Why a plane, so in that sense, and not a, 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 a quadcopter or another form of helicopter? A lot of people look at what Zipline's doing and say, well, why are you building an airplane and not a quadcopter? It seems more obvious to use a quadcopter. The challenge with quadcopters is that they are not very efficient at flying, and for that reason their ranges are really, really limited. They can fly for 15 to 20 minutes, they might be able to fly 
you know, five to 10 kilometers. Our system is designed to fly 150 kilometers. And the advantage of that is that when you're trying to serve a whole country, uh, because you know, the area of a circle is R squared, the farther you can go, the more people you can cover. So with a quadcopter, we might be able to cover something like 10,000 people here from this distribution center. With our, with our current uh, plane, which we call ZIPS, we can cover 7 million people. So that's a big difference. That's pretty much most of Rwanda's population. Yeah, we're covering about half of the country, a little more than half of the country from this system. We plan to set up a second distribution center in eastern Rwanda, which will allow us to ultimately put each and every one of the 11 million citizens of Rwanda within a 15-minute delivery of any essential medical product they could need. What's the future for Zipline? How, how do you see it rolling out from here? We really see the future as in this specific distribution center, delivering more and more medical products. Because blood is actually a very, it's a niche product. It's something that's needed very quickly and is very important. But there are so many other crucial products that we could also be delivering. Things like rabies prophylaxis or vaccines or antivenin. All of these products can save thousands of lives. Uh, but we also plan to expand this model to other countries, both in East Africa and places like Latin America or Southeast Asia. Uh, and then finally, we're working with countries like the U.S. to actually show how these kinds of systems can save lives and provide a higher level of healthcare access, particularly in rural environments uh, in countries like the U.S. or Europe. There's two more questions I'd like to ask. One is, <clears throat> how um, sustainable is it on a local basis? Is this operation able to John? be run by local people, John? for local people, or does it can need... You put it there? One of the most interesting things about the distribution center as it's currently operating is it's being operated by a combination of Rwandan and American engineers and flight operators. Uh, there's a fair amount of skill transfer going on in terms of teaching each and every person that we hire who comes into the system uh, how to operate it safely and maintain it. It's important to realize the government is not needing to figure out how to run drones. They actually don't have that much interest in how to run drones. They just want to make sure the medicine goes from point A to point B very quickly, fast enough to save a patient's life. Uh, and in the long run, these kinds of systems, they'll be run entirely by Zipline team members, but those team members will be primarily from the country where the system's operating. So we expect the distribution center here to be run almost entirely by native Rwandans. What kind of insurance do you need to run an operation? Uh, you know, we get insurance. You can, in the same way that you can insure a plane, we're insuring each and every zip. Uh, we have an umbrella insurance policy that ensures that if a vehicle were to come down and crash or break a window or you know dent somebody's roof, I mean, this is these things are not going to be happening happening um, on a on a on a monthly or even yearly basis. But you have to insure it, uh, and the reason that we insure it is that it gives the government a lot of comfort in terms of uh, exactly. Um, how this is going to operate in a commercial way. And so we have an umbrella insurance policy for the entire fleet here, ensuring that if at any time something were to go wrong uh, or we were to have an issue where some property were damaged, we're covered. Do you feel that other countries are too cautious about the potential for drugs? That's an interesting question. You must be quite frustrated about Definitely. the approach that um, I think when we look at the way that other countries currently think about this kind of technology and how it might help or hurt their efforts to serve their people, it's very clear that we are afraid of what we don't understand. You know, new kinds of technology, I think it's often the case that people are very cynical or, or scared. It takes a special culture, a special kind of government, a special kind of people who say, we want to be the first, we want to lead the way. I think that the US has played that role with many kinds of technology. And it's kind of extraordinary that Rwanda, as a small country with limited resources, is currently leading the world in terms of showing how this technology can be used to save lives. So are other countries being too cautious then, if, if Rwanda is willing to jump in? I think that if there are other countries out there who are currently being cautious, and there are absolutely quite a few who are just waiting to see, does this work the way we think it is? Uh, or, or the way we think it will, 
those countries will absolutely, I think, in seeing the success of this distribution center, say, okay, we're comfortable, we want to we move forward.